I thought my competition days were over. I was looking forward to just being able to walk again. Coming into the into the Paralympic Games representing Team USA, I mean, that's big. Nothing really worked the way that I wanted it to. You know, I didn't have the range of motion or didn't have the right feel and realized pretty quick that yeah, I need to develop something better. I'm a garage guy, a problem solver, and you know, with my experience working on racing equipment and being a, an athlete and understanding body mechanics, um, all that experience really kind of set me up to handle this problem pretty good. We had joked in the hospital that Mike would design his own leg. And I'll never forget, he set the leg on the kitchen table and he looked at me and he said, this is how I'm going to race again. I learned how to snowboard as an amputee, which uh, had a, a very steep learning curve. I developed this knee system around a mountain bike shock that uses compressed air as a spring rate and hydraulic dampening. I'll have to learn how to, how to snowboard myself and test it before I you know, bolt it on somebody else and let them try it. And that was basically the whole reason I got into snowboarding was for product development. You shift your weight into it, which flexes the knee. As you put weight into the toe, it compresses up to 28 degrees. My competitive career actually started when I was like 13 years old or so, racing BMX bikes. I ended up racing snowmobiles, snowcross. In 2008, I got thrown from my machine. The main artery that supplies my lower leg was severed on impact. He completely bled out. I went from like, oh no, our season's over to, oh, this is the fight of our life right now. Three days later, we would be making the decision to amputate his leg to help save his life. You know, at that point, I wasn't really thinking I would be a pro athlete anymore. So my plan B would have to be creating prosthetic equipment for others and build a business around it. In 2014, they brought snowboarding into the Paralympics for the first time. Prosthetics for snowboarding are well behind their walking counterparts. Part of the reason why snowboarding has taken so long to get into the Paralympics is the lack of equipment that allows them to ride really well. I take a lot of pride in developing equipment that's helping these athletes really step up their performance game. In 2014, we had one athlete on our equipment. Going into these games, we're gonna have probably over 20 athletes on our equipment. It shows the progression of snowboarding for para-athletes. And, you know, a few of them are my, my straight-up competitors. <laughs> yeah, what am I going to be racing in South Korea? Paralympics. Yeah. Me as a competitor, I want to be on the top of the podium. But me as the company owner of Biodapt, I'm going to be pumped however it, it ends up. When Dad races snowboards, and we tell him good luck, what do we say to him? Go for gold. That's right. Go. A lot of people do. They ask me, they're like, how do you let Mike go back to that? Or why don't you try to talk him out of it? And it's the smile. It's the pure joy he gets doing what he loves to do. I love it. It's our life. <laughs>